Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank. Uh, real quick video. I had a print failure. I had, this is part of Star Boost, my the Mark 39 uh, Iron Man armor that I'm printing. And it's a pretty big piece as you can see. And while it was printing, I had a layer shift. And you might be able to just see it all right there. Shifted. And there's a couple things that can cause this. Um, your belt can come loose. And as the print's moving, your one of your belt gears slips moves in the wrong direction. Clearly mine was in the Y direction. So it could have been my bed. I checked my belts on my bed, they're tight. It could also be something like an error in the G code. As it's moving up, the coordinates get messed up and then it shifts the layer a little bit. The nozzle collides, the print gets knocked loose. Um, all it can be in my case is the G code. I've already evaluated everything else. These things happen, there's ways to recover from them. Also, you'll notice I was stringing super bad. Like this is the worst string I've ever had and then the layer shift happened. So I think I definitely had some messed up G-code, which is weird because I reviewed my G-code before I sent it, but uh, we're gonna try to save this. Now you can't save everything, and there's gonna be things I cover in this little uh, tutorial that you know might seem obvious to some people, but to others it might not, so just please bear with me. If this was a more complicated print, I probably wouldn't try to save it, but considering it printed perfectly after the shift, I am gonna to try to move it back into place and then re-weld it together with some techniques you've probably already seen me use. If this was like the advanced honeycomb pattern that's on the rest of Star Boost, I would not try to save this. Um, Rewelding this and trying to line this back up would be an absolute nightmare. So luckily it only happened on one of the few parts that has no honeycomb on it. So let's jump in and we're gonna get the supports off and get this separated. So you know what, now that I'm saying that, we're gonna leave the supports on for now because it makes a really nice little holder for this all to, you know, work with. Yeah, this is crazy. I've never, I've, usually when I, uh, if I've had prints shift for some reason, they just fail. First thing you're gonna wanna do is see if you can break off the print. And you gotta be real careful because you don't wanna break something you don't mean to. And there we go. Usually when you have a layer shift, none of the infill lines up. Obviously your shells won't line up. Um, so it should come apart pretty easily. Oh, okay, look at that. So it's three parts. The way it shifted, this is the left section, and this is all support material. So yeah, we're gonna have to get rid of this. Like if you just evaluate this piece, it's actually a pretty good print. What I do is I'll take a lighter and I'll burn off all my stringing because I paint everything, so I really don't care. Everything gets sanded and painted. Yeah, so that came out pretty nice, actually. One part, and then a little part of the abs down here actually shifted. All right, so this will either break at the shift or at the support, let's find out. Oh, it broke at the support. I don't know how happy I am about that, actually, because I think I might have, hmm, that's gonna be hard to get that shift off. A lot of you can probably already figure out, like I'm just gonna plastic weld it on, but I wanna show you guys, I, I wanna do it. Right when I start, right when I saw it starting to shift and realized it was gonna survive, I let it go. I'm like, you know what? I can make a video out of this. So instead of just canceling the print, which had already was already 20 hours in, um, I pushed through and I think it'll be worthwhile. Cool, so that's part two. And then we need to get this last shift off right here. So that's some. So to get this one off, I guess gotta pry. Uh, that's one. There it goes, cool. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my soldering iron, already heated it up, a little hot knife on it. I'm just gonna kind of flatten up any, any weird things down because there might've been some, um, some extru weird extrusion. I'm gonna get everything kind of as flat as possible and clean up any bad edges. Now, say that my print shifted at this point and then it failed, it got knocked off. Um, I had to stop it, stringing, it was just, it was too bad. You know, it, it, it's actually a miracle that this survived. What you could do then is, I, I've talked about it before, so say it failed like this, you know, and then the re all that was left were these top bits. You know, you just, what you could do is then just print the rest of the part in Cura, you can either slice it with slicer, or you can drop it through the build plate and print only what's on the top positive spot, and then do the same thing that I'm gonna do here. You're gonna reattach them, and then weld them together. So this is a this is just a good technique to have, and you know, to be something that you're comfortable with. Um, I definitely recommend it. <laughs> it's very, very useful. 
Actually, you can already see it lining up pretty nicely right here. It wants to line up. We basically only lost one layer of adhesion and filling. So that's where it's gonna go. And we're just gonna fill that seam in. So we'll do the middle first because it's a small part. And then I'll probably only do one side and then uh, I'll, I'll flash forward to the rest. So you could do a couple things. You could tape it into place. You could, however you need to hold this. I am gonna tape this one. Cause it does not want to line up the right way. And I'm just, I'm feeling the edges to see like, is it smooth? Is it lined up? So now I left little gaps showing. And that's where I'm gonna actually weld. And I'm gonna focus mostly on the inside to get it into position. Don't breathe this, wear a mask. And I'm cutting through pretty good with welding because I want it to be a nice strong bond. And unfortunately, I only used like a 5% infill on this, so I don't have much to work with. I'm, I'm gonna have to add some material. And I'm doing the same thing I do in my other video. I'm kind of, I'm just letting the edges kind of fold together, making a crevice in the back, and then I'm gonna fold it over itself. I've started to really like the hot knife feature on my soldering iron because I can use it to smooth, actually like flat iron the, uh, the parts. So it comes in handy for the front with all the detail. And the more, the flatter you and nicer you can get it with your soldering iron, the less um, sanding and filling and post work you have to do. So that's back in place and I'm, I can run my finger over it and it's actually nice and smooth. It's actually like, it feels even and level. So I, I, I can't complain about that. So I'm gonna do the front, which is the, the, the nerve racking part for a lot of people. I found if you don't overheat the plastic too much, um, it won't collapse in on you. And again, I'm, <laughs> I wish I had used like a 10% instead of a five. All right, so that's smooth. There's a little bit of gap right there, but honestly, when I sand it, it's a little hard to see. Um, when I sand it, that'll go away. And uh, just normal primer will fill that in. Nothing even fancy. All right, so I need to fill in just a little bit of a gap there. And I'm actually gonna recycle some of the material that came off my raft. And I'm gonna melt it into the spots, into the holes. And I'm just actually kind of cutting little chunks off with the soldering iron and building up material that I can now go around and flatten out. Adam Savage said every tool is a hammer. Well, every failed print is weld material. I actually have another part of the star boost that failed that I can't save. It was uh, it had just completely failed. It was my fault. Um, but I'm gonna melt it and recycle it and use it as uh, a part, <laughs> just parts of filler and welding material okay so that's back on it's a little uh there's a little still a tiny bit of a gap um i'm gonna sand it and this is somewhere that will probably take a little bit of wood filler just to kind of clean it up in there but it's back on that's what counts so you could glue this um and then start welding i don't recommend that because if, if uh the soldering iron touches dry super glue, it like vaporizes and uh, it's very toxic. And if it gets in your eyes, it can blind you and it burns and ask me how I know. So don't do that. Be smart, unless you're just planning on gluing it and then using wood filler thing, you know, Bondo, but that's not what this tutorial is for. I don't recommend pushing when you do this. Let the soldering iron just kind of honestly just fall into the, the print. Because if you push, you could jar it off center and mess up the alignment. But I basically let it fall through the first couple wall, the first wall or two. In my case, I only have two walls, so it doesn't have to go far. I'm actually gonna tape in the other one too, while this one kind of, while these initial welds cool down. All right, so did the other side. Now I'm gonna take the tape off of this one and finish up the entire back. But since it's such a big part, I'm actually gonna put a few tacks in the front because as I weld the back, I don't want it to bow or warp or tilt. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna actually hold the front in place. It might look a little messed up, but you, you this is really what you kind of need to do. I might actually be able to just iron it over. Yeah, that works. You might be able to actually get a seam that's so close that you can actually, on the front side, you really just, um, you almost just color. And what it does is it barely melts that little top layer. As long as you have good um, 
plastic penetration in the back. You can do you can close up the front like this. Just remember when you're sanding not to push too hard on that spot. And now it's covered over and it's about the same depth. So sanding that down will pretty much get rid of that whole thing and primer, normal primer should take care of that. All right, so there's a hole in here that kind of got blown out a little bit too much. I gotta uh, fill that in a little bit better. Yeah, much better. So what you could also do, there's tons, like I said, there's tons of stuff, tons of ways to approach this. Um, you could also take some extra raft material, other extra failed prints, and just build them up on the back like a little platform. And uh, just you can make this as strong as you want or as weak as you want. Um, I'm not going too crazy with it because I trust what I'm doing. All right, so the back's all fused. I'm gonna go through and fit, clean up the front and that'll be it for this. Um, and then I'll do the, the other side of my own time. All right, <laughs> okay, so the front's all welded up. So this whole section is all covered up. Obviously I'm gonna have to sand it and clean it up. So if you're really invested on what this is gonna look like, keep following the Starboost build um, videos. Uh, that's when I'm gonna obviously sand it and paint it and all that. But this is a nice welded strong print again. Um, I trust this just like I trust any other part of this print. And again, you can take as much time as you want, cleaning it up, adding material. Next step is gonna be you know cleaning that side up. But you can see the line there. And there's no, you know, this is all nice and smooth now. So I'm, uh, I'm happy with that layer shift save. And I'm cool using that part for the build. I hope that helped you guys. Some of you probably already know this. It's just pulling the trigger and being comfortable to do it. Some of you might not have ever thought of doing something like that. So if this, uh, if this video did help you, maybe please consider subscribing. It would help a lot. And I promise I uh, will make more videos like this and help you guys out when I can. Um, if you want to see more of the Mark 39 Starboost build, uh, go check out those videos and that uh, whole playlist. And yeah, thank you very much and have a good day.